Staples, friends. So when you're out thrifting and yard sailing or you get that thread up shoe box in, do you happen to notice that several of the shoes are a little bit stinky and a little bit dingy and you might not feel totally comfortable putting them in your shop for resale? Well, then this video is for you because today I am going to share some tips, tricks, and a few tools that you can add to your reselling arsenal to help refreshed used shoes. So if you wanna learn more, just keep on watching. Thank you so much for returning to my channel and if you're new here my name is Heather and I am a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, and now Etsy and I use this YouTube channel to document my journey. So if you're interested in how to resell on either of those platforms, what reselling's like in general, all things thrift, if you have a love for vintage, or if you just love to watch unboxings from places like Goodwill, thread up in bulk, then you will definitely want to go ahead and subscribe to this channel. As I said in the intro, today I'm going to talk to you all about the different supplies that I have on hand and tools that I have in my reselling arsenal to make sure I can take some thrifted, sometimes a little bit dingy, sometimes a little bit stinky shoes and refresh them, freshen them up and make them ready for resale. So let me show you some of the tools that I keep in my arsenal. And I usually have most everything um, in this little container. And then I usually walk around the house and pick up the things that are just regular household cleaners that I use and bring them all into my office and onto my surface so that I can do a big batch cleaning. I prefer to collect things and do things in batches. One, because I like to do a task all together and two, I just think it's quicker. So I'm gonna insert a picture here that shows you all of the all of the items that I use, like I said, from household cleaners to a few tools that are super easy and inexpensive to purchase on Amazon. Now let's talk about each of these things individually and how and why I use them. So first up is just good old fashioned Arm & Hammer baking soda. I love this stuff. It is awesome at getting rid of smells. So let's say you have an old sneaker that looks good enough to resell but is a little bit stinky in the inside and maybe the inside foot pads don't come out because if they did come out I would just pop those puppies out and put them in the washing machine and in fact a sneaker like this I would just put the whole thing in the washing machine. But let's say that you put it in the washing machine and it still has a little funk, or let's say that there's some component part on it that doesn't let you put it in the washing machine. When that is the case, I use my good old fashioned trusty, trusting baking soda. And I just take a little bit of that and sprinkle it inside the shoe, let it sit overnight, come back out, dump it all out, and usually your odor's gone. If the odor is really stinky, <laughs> then I'll sprinkle some of this into a bowl, add a few drops, and I've been just using cheap old Walmart, um, Better Homes and Garden um, essential oils. Add a couple drops of that, a few drops of that to the baking soda, mix it up real well, and then put that in here. In my opinion, the essential oils help the baking soda even more than normal to extract out those stinky smells. So those are two great things to start off with and probably two things you may already have in your house. Second up that I use the most would be just hot water and dish soap and a old rag which for me is usually some old towel that I've ripped up into pieces. So I'm currently using seventh generation. I know people rave about Dawn dish soap as well. I mean, to me, any dish soap works just fine. 
a few drops in warm soapy water and that is a great start to cleaning off all your shoes whether it's leather i also will sometimes do that on suede i don't dunk the shoe in the water but i wring out my rag and just kind of wipe everything down wipe the footbeds down and um, just give it a nice good cleanup i would also use that on the soles as well i also have a toothbrush that i keep in here in case i get to any really rough spots this, these shoes are a good example because they have all those little creases in there and that can really get into all of those creases really well um, but this is usually all I need to use, warm water, dish soap, and a little elbow grease, and it really goes a long way. Next up, if that doesn't work, then I pull out the Magic Eraser, and I call this a Magic Eraser, but it's probably a voila eraser or some other nonsense because it is not a genuine one. To me, they these melamine pads fall apart so easily, you might as well just get a cheap one. But this works fantastic on any markings that you can get out with just dish soap and your um, toothbrush. And I love, love, love to use this on these component parts of tennis shoes. It really cleans up the soles, the part that most people are gonna see. It, it works fantastic on that. And all these little plastic component parts, I mean, it just really buffs them up and shines them up and makes them look new. And then if you're like me, I always take a picture like this to show them the sole of the shoe so they can see how worn it is. And a lot of times I'll go ahead and magic erase that to get that as clean as possible so it looks as new as possible. So magic erasers are another great tool for your arsenal. It also a lot of times will get off your prices on shoes. Um, so it is a good thing to use for prices. Now this shoe, you can tell I can't get the price off. <laughs> um, there are other solutions for getting prices off as well. Let me go over some of those in addition to the magic eraser. You can use alcohol on like, um, a cotton swab or I use a little fabric pad um, and you can rub that over it to get it off. I've heard people say you can use WD on it. I have not tried that personally myself to get that off. And I've also heard people say, which I tried also on this shoe, which is you can use um, a bit of sandpaper and actually sand the top layer off. Now, I don't know if you can tell in the pictures, but this is a rubber sole and the price has actually absorbed all the way down because they used a sharpie all the way down into the rubber sole it's not coming off and i could tell that when i started sanding it so i just tried to make it look less ugly <laughs> and the price on it wasn't even the price that i paid for the shoes but still i know some people are really offended by having when they cross their legs and stuff um and show the back of their shoe for people to see that price so um, you can cover it up just with a little disguise to make it a little less noticeable. But those are some quick and easy ways with things that you probably already have in your house to take off the price. Now, in addition to tennis shoes and the like, you probably are going to have some leather shoes in your mix. I know I get a lot of leather shoes in my thread up boxes and I love to thrift dress shoes, loafers, um, flats, ballet flats, all these, they move really well for me. And a lot of times I will go ahead and source leather ones. And if you've watched any reseller, I'm sure you've heard a million times that if you're gonna buff up any leather, then you have got to have this Doc Martin Wonder Balsam. I got this on Amazon and I think right now it's about 10 bucks. And I've had it for over a year. I literally just use the little sponge that comes in it, which is why mine's all deformed looking. And I still have a ton in here. This lasts a long, long time. Definitely worth the investment. And a little goes a long way. In addition to shoes, I love this for thrifted handbags. Um, 
anything. I mean, if you have a leather coat that you wanted to shine up technically and you wanna use this little sponge, you could get all up on it. Um, but this is great, especially if you have little scuff marks on it, it brightens them up. If you just wanna have a little bit of sheen, um, it just, it refreshes everything. I love, love, love to use this. Um, I've done it on everything from like these Lucky brands all the way up to some high-end shoes and it just really does wonders for the leather. Highly, highly suggest it. And just refreshing, just using um, a little bit of the dish liquid to clean a footbed and refresh with this can take just minutes to do and it will really, really make a shoe look brand new. It's amazing to me. If you're a person that, like me, who is obsessed with just before and afters, or you just, I mean, if it thrills you a little bit, maybe it's my OCD to see things go from dirty to clean, this will just be pure magical fun for you to use. <laughs> and then one of the last things that I invested in is one of these suede brushes. And again, this is on Amazon right now, and it is, I think, running about $7 right now. If you have one of those um, Amazon apps, I think I'm using Keepa right now, where it um, is an extension for Chrome, it'll tell you, uh, it'll show you a graph of um, how the prices fluctuate on Amazon so that you can see when things go the lowest and um, you can just kind of stock things until they get down to the price you want. It's great if you are looking to save money or you're just a regular old cheapo like I am. So I'd never used one of these before. Um, I actually had gotten some suede shoes in a thread up box that had, you know how suede gets really matted or around the toe area a lot. There'll just be a lot of debris and dirt and originally what I did was I took my Dawn dish liquid, my wash towel, wrung it out a lot, a lot, a lot, because you don't love to dunk suede um, in water, and I would just kind of buff it out. And it would work okay, but it didn't work great because as you know, suede can be a fairly fibrous material. You use this side when the job is a big job to do. So if things look really dingy, there's a lot of dirt in there, you're going to use this nubby side. If there's just a little bit of discoloration, then you can use this side. And you literally just buff that out. Super, super simple. What I usually do is use the light side first, and then if it's not working, I'll flip over to the other side. And usually what I do after I do this, cause it will fling some suede. There'll be some suede on your table. There'll be some little suede pieces on you. Usually after I do that, I'll come back with my damp dish rag and just wipe it down a little bit so that when I actually, um, so that when the customer actually gets these shoes or I'm photographing these shoes, I don't have little suede pieces falling off everything constantly. This is amazing to me. It really works great. It can make a shoe that might have looked like it wasn't sellable or just sometimes you're just embarrassed to sell them. They look a little too used and it'll really take away those spots and make it worthwhile. So like this shoe, I would use that all the way around and I would use my soap and water on the footbed, wrung out all the way just to get the... Um, the deep dirt out, and then I would actually, since this is a suede footbed, use this as well. This is great too to work on um, less dirty Birkenstocks it'll work on. Now if it's a filthy, filthy Birkenstock where your footbed is smushed, then you'll want to do the old baking soda and water paste trick. You just make a paste out of it. You smush it all on the bottom of it. I usually leave it overnight or a day or a week, depending on when I get to it next. And then you just wipe it all out. Um, I've done that with a pair of Birkenstocks and I was shocked by how new it makes them look. And it also, the baking soda creates a bit of a texture. So it, it makes um, the footbed feel like the original textured suede. It was amazing to me. In addition to these things, I also keep a little bit of this um, Miss Myers room freshener on hand. If I have any shoes that have that musky smell that you get a lot in thrift this stores, stuff works fabulous. I've used it on just about every single material. I've never had any problems, any spotting, anything like that. And I really just lightly 
missed it. And then the trick to me is to let it sit out in the open air. You definitely would not want to miss this and then put it in a poly bag or a package until it sat out in the open air. This also works great on um, thrift finds, uh, not talking about shoes, but clothes. I thrift a lot of clothes that um, need to be dry clean or things that are new with tags um, that I'm not going to go ahead and wash. This, if I give it a spritz all over, hang it up, give it a spritz all over inside and out and leave it on my um, clothing rack for a day or two and come back and sniff it, I'm amazed by how much odor this actually removes. And also the smell is quite, quite faint. I'm a super sniffer. <laughs> Sniffing's my superpower. Um, I have a very uh, um, strong sense of smell. So um, some of the smells are quite annoying to me, but this one I find that once you let it air out a little bit, you barely even notice it unless you really put your nose up on it. So that's why I feel comfortable using this one. And it is a lavender scent. And you'll notice also with my essential oils that I use a lavender scent because I find that it's least offensive to my nose. So I'm hoping since I'm a super sensitive smeller that it will be um, least offensive to everybody else's noses. And so far I haven't had any complaints. Knock on wood and hope that that stays. So those are some of the supplies that I do keep in my reselling arsenal to be sure that I can easily clean up any sort of worse for wear shoe that happens to come into my home and to make it look nice and refreshed before selling it. So if you found this video useful, please do go ahead and give me a thumbs up or also go ahead and leave me a comment. Are these the supplies that you use? If any of these things work for you, go ahead and comment below and let me know that they do or if you're using something different, go ahead and comment below and let me know as I'm sure anybody who stumbles into this video will greatly appreciate the knowledge. Plus, if they're anything like me and they stumble into a how to clean video and they see multiple comments down below saying, yes, it's true, it'll give them the peace of mind to go ahead and give it a try. And also, if you haven't done it already, and especially if you've been watching a few of my videos and you haven't done it already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. And I have been since 2021 uploading regularly on Tuesdays and Fridays. And I have a lot of new content coming, so you definitely will not want to miss out on that. So thanks so much for watching this video and I hope all of you guys have a fantabulous weekend and I'll see you on Tuesday with the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.